Hi everyone, this is Ebony D. Chain with ShineFromInside.com. Welcome to my next little interview. Today we're joined by Ellie. Who is Ellie? I met the wonderful Ellie through doTERRA. We're in different teams, but we all love one another and we collaborate to support our customers with the group that she set up with some of her other colleagues called Spirited Essentials. So Ellie, where are you from originally? <laughs> um, I am a Londoner. I'm a Londoner by like, my, as in I grew up born and bred, but my heritage uh -huh. is, is not English at all. It's a mixture of the whole of Europe, basically. Okay, wonderful. I'm I European. I'm European, I love that. <laughs> European. <laughs> okay, wonderful. And Ellie, how are you, obviously we're going through quarantine just now and there's a lot going on in the world. How are you coping with quarantine? Oh, thanks for asking. Um, I am coping remarkably well because first of all, I like being alone. I, uh, and, um, I am alone a lot of the time anyway. So my actual day-to-day -day life hasn't changed that much. Um, and I really like spending time with Simon, my husband, and the dog. Um, and I think, I mean, I could be far more profound. I mean, I, I do think that I feel like I'm on the cusp of the most insane awakening of all time. And in an esoteric sense, there's a lot happening, which is very exciting. But in a more practical sense, I do love the way that, despite the fact that I'm, you know, in a really remote place in the corner of Cornwall, mm -hmm. I feel so connected to all of us, all, all, the, all of our, my doTERRA family, who are like my best friends. And that includes some people in your doTERRA family. And just generally, I've never been more grateful for the internet, which is a real paradigm shift in terms of how I've thought about technology. So mm. it's all good. It's crazy times, but it's, it's good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think a lot of us are seeing, yeah, seeing that things could be better and things like maybe this needed to happen in some bizarre, crazy way. And, you know, obviously it's absolutely devastating what's happening with a lot of medical staff and you know, people that are getting it and, and passing away way too early and, and the older people it's 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 really awful but yeah there's a lot a lot happening for sure I'm grateful for yeah yeah <laughs> okay so um i know you were also in china um for a lot longer than i was i was only there for six hours <laughs> and on a big plane <laughs> um i think you were there for about a week in january so yeah. how yeah what have you been doing to ground yourself and look after yourself like oils and otherwise um through that time and, and since then yeah great question um because when we were out there we were just talking before we hit record both simon and i fell ill with what we now are pretty sure was the coronavirus all the same symptoms and it was really intense and the worst part was that i didn't have my full range of oils with me so i luckily i had um the air blend which is a dream come true but it ran out because I was in so much I was coughing so much and I couldn't breathe it was really awful and this is a lovely story then we, we popped over to New Zealand for a week which was kind of the purpose of the trip and I ran out of the air blend so I was freaking out because it was the only thing that would stop me coughing and it was coughing I coughed so hard I broke one of my ribs it was wow. really bad. so I went on Facebook and I went onto the team bliss um team's um facebook page which is my friend tara bliss's big team and a lot of them are australians and kiwis and i said i'm desperate i'm in this town in new zealand is anyone even vaguely close who has some spare air that can <laughs> within like two hours this woman who's not even on team bliss she's just like has some doTERRA oils she's a customer but someone had told someone who told someone met up with me and handed over just a whole fresh bottle as a gift oh Wonderful. so amazing <laughs> and then, um, yeah and then obviously since then it's just been but but I think that if I hadn't had my usual oils routine and obviously I take the supplements every single day religiously as does Simon I think we would have been a lot more ill um, if we hadn't had such robust immune systems um, since then strangely enough the oils that I've been most drawn to and in the way that I'm using them more than ever I've moved kind of beyond protecting my physical body and I've moved more into like protecting my energetic, mm. my emotions. Um, that's just how I'm called to use the oils at the moment. And that's a whole kind of a new way for me to use them. It's been amazing. Yeah, absolutely. So which ones are you loving for the emotional uh, side and, and the protection side? Yeah, great question. Um, so I'm using a lot of the florals, mm. jasmine, mm. rose, 
mm. Blue Lotus, which is obviously a limited time, oh. which is incredible. Um, and using a lot of bergamot on the Shen Men point. Do you know that point? It's, um, no, I don't love bergamot. So where the, the little like dip inside the top of the ear, there's a point in there. And if you just touch bergamot, but be very careful in the sun, obviously. Um, if you just touch feather light on that point with a little bit of bergamot on each finger, that's a, a systemic reset. Beautiful. Um, which has been amazing to combine that with some breath work. Mm. And, um, geranium and manuka have been, I can't explain to you how, how intensely I'm obsessed with manuka. It's like having a visceral hug. I feel when I, when I inhale it in the mornings, it's like this absolute... It's the, the most dramatic emotional reaction I've ever had from an oil. Wow. And I'm so devastated because I was going to buy that when I was in Australia and I didn't get oh, that one. You know, it's such a shame how like probably everyone watching this doesn't have it. Um, <laughs> but it, I use a lot of the Emotions and Essential Oils app because I don't have the book with me. Um, yeah. That app is, has been really good for just like finding new oils to work with. Yeah. And I think that's the wonderful thing, isn't it? Like, you know, different ones speak to you at different times and, and different ones can do the same job for you. It's just a matter of what, what you're pulled to at that time. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay, um, I'm going to try and go through these questions reasonably fast. Um, so what did you do before doTERRA? Like, tell me a bit about your story pre-doTERRA. Sure. I had a record label and a recording studio and... I was a trained sound engineer and that was my entire life for at least 10 years professionally. And my entire childhood, it was like, I'm going to be a recording engineer and I'm going to have my own record label. It was forged in my identity. Yeah. And um, it, it just actually, even though I sort of checked every box, I had a successful label and everything, nothing I couldn't have wanted for more. But the day that an email about doTERRA landed in my inbox was like oh my god that's it was really bizarre it was like I just realized how unfulfilled I was well I kind of knew anyway how unfulfilled I was and then this landed in my lap an email from Tara Bliss and I just said yes I want to know more about this and honestly that day was like the turning point of my life yeah yeah and I now I've sold the label to a Dutch another a Dutch label Okay, wow. So much happier. It's taken me a few years to disentangle my identity with the music industry. I know that you resonate with this. Absolutely. Like, yeah. I'm literally <laughs> saying your experience, but just with a different industry. Yeah, that's, that's why I loved your story from day one. It just really <laughs> spoke to me. And I love the fact that a lot of people think that everyone in doTERRA comes from yoga or meditation or that kind of background. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a lot of us came from completely yeah. opposite backgrounds and got into all that through doTERRA. So exactly that but I love now I think the main difference and I bet you find the same is is the people who we work with that are so that's what makes this just such a, a, a like relaxed exhale into a, just a community that is so much kinder yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I'm very happy <laughs> yeah I love that I love the the contradiction of, of where you've come from to, to mm -hmm. the even though it's not really a contradiction, but it might sound like it to a lot. Yeah. Um, so why, why did you decide to educate people how to use and to sell doTERRA oils? What, what made you decide to make that leap from uh, email to, to really going I for it? Full -time? I mean, the honest truth is there was actually no thinking that went into it. It was like a physical, I read the email, I responded saying, I'd like to know more. I had a call with her. She told me about the business model. I had never even experienced a doTERRA oil. Well, not really. I think I like vaguely tried one once, but I had always found it really difficult to order them. So I was like, oh, I'm not getting involved in this. Um, and somehow after having the discussion with her, it just clicked. I, I came at it really from like a business model angle because I, was, I had been thinking, oh, if I don't have a record label, what am I going to do with my life? I... I I had very specific parameters that I wanted to operate within. Um, total freedom, be my own boss. Um, I never want to go near logistics ever again. I don't want to do any shipping, manufacturing. I was allergic to it at that point. So the idea of having a business model where you're literally partnering with a brand, you're doing all the fun stuff like educating and getting people excited about it. And then when the ordering comes, you're like, okay, just uh, order it from the website and you don't need to do any of the fulfillment. 
that was intoxicating for me and it still is to this day yeah. and and i don't know sharing and teaching about the oils evolves constantly because now i'm all fired up about the energetic properties of the oils yeah. i'm supporting all my customers in that way now um and and i'm sure you agree that the teaching about oils has been a springboard for discovering and teaching about so many other things too Absolutely. and it's been really fun to realize that i like teaching mm. yeah <laughs> it's so cool yeah. yeah it's not something i ever thought i would do to be honest um, exactly same and it's really connecting with people isn't it i think as well i think that's why it's so fun with the tarot you're not like just talking at people you're like listening to people and you're learning from them as much as they're learning from you so it's so really yes yeah right with that Okay, so how, how have you changed as a person through your Tara journey? <laughs> you should ask me a different question, which is, how many times have you completely changed as a person? <laughs> because I have gone through so many metamorphoses, is that the plural? Um, the biggest change that I've had is learning how to be compassionate of other people. And what I mean by that in a nutshell is when you first get plunged into this business, you're you you have to just learn leadership immediately and it is a skill it's people will say you're you're a born you're either a born leader or you're not but it's just not true because even though you might be born with an urge to lead and to guide it's how you do it and i think my biggest change has come from initially really coming from a place of i had a vision and i was really strong with that vision and i just wanted to show other people how to work that vision I wasn't actually listening to people and meeting them where they were at. And I have softened so much as a person and in terms of how I work with people. And I've done so much work around how to be a good leader uh, or a compassionate leader. And we're, in our team, we have quite a unique structure in that we don't really operate on a hierarchy. Um, and we try to make it as much of a sort of um, collaborative, everybody's equal. Um, and that's like, it's taken a few years to really sink in and, and for people to embody that. But I would say I am 10 times more compassionate as a person now. Mm. And, and genuinely now I can say since a few months, I, we've somehow don't know what, what's happened, but we really have embodied wanting to, uh, wanting to be in service, which is such an overused phrase in life and certainly in doTERRA, but we actually mean it now. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we just all operate as like one organism, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but one of a less strange phrase. Yeah, I think that's one of the hardest things for people to actually understand when they, when they come to doTERRA. Um, you know, that, that people, when you sign up with someone, I think people still have that sort of pyramid scheme type mentality about things. And they think yes. that if they're signed up under someone, they're always kind of under them. And they don't yeah. realize that with doTERRA, you know, a lot of people overtain me. I've got several t people in my team that are the same rank as me and, and will probably, in fact, yeah, I've got definitely one girl that's overtaken me and she's on like my sixth level or something. So yeah, I think that's absolutely amazing. Um, yeah. Such a fantastic thing. I mean, you couldn't do that in any other business in the world. No, absolutely not. And, and I just think um, it's a real skill to navigate leadership. And obviously, if like you and I have been doing this for a long time now, so it's only natural that we have more experience than someone coming in that's about how to how to utilize and be there to support and guide but with establishing this mutual respect for zero expectations from either side and that goes both ways that's been the biggest lesson that i've learned is not having expectations from them and then fostering the same back but in a really compassionate way not in a like if, if you have even a smidgen of resentment behind anything that you do or say, mm. like it can be felt and it's so hard. Like we're all women and we're all working together in a very unique way. Mm. And it brings up all of your shit, all of your fears, all of your worries, all of your stories deeply embedded since childhood, all of your shadows come to the surface with this business model. Because I do believe doTERRA, to be like this divine entity that has brought all of us together in a very unique business model that now means, especially during this great change, that we're all extremely close, we're all extremely used to working with each other, 
and we are pros at collaborative business. Mm. And it's something that the rest of the world is only just waking up to, but it's just, again, learning how to do that in the most compassionate way, which has taken me years. Yeah, that's absolutely beautiful. I've literally got shivers from that. That's absolutely stunning. <laughs> absolutely true. Very, very true. Um, okay, <laughs> I have to move on from that quickly. <laughs> um, I will keep moving on because I don't want this to be such a long video because I know we could talk for hours about most of this stuff. Um, but yeah, so how have you changed the person? And then how has your life changed as well? Like, you know, I know you probably had deadlines and sort of those kind of things to deal with before so how's that kind of changed I mean it's completely different like I have a different house a different husband a different <laughs> a different body a different mind like there's nothing with it I've had a lot of plastic surgery now I'm joking <laughs> <laughs> can you tell no I just I there's like hardly anything that's remained the same I mean my like love for having fun and and lols is like always going to be my top priority in life it's like how can we make this fun but i just i mean i couldn't even begin to scratch the surface of how much has changed um and it is really i do consider Do doTERRA to be like the first and the most important like portal into that new consciousness and just practically just having the oils is there's such a physical anchor for us to like create an amazing relationship with our bodies around because they're like a tangible really amazing enjoyable luxurious thing to work with like a plant medicine that smells divine um just like and the myriad of ways you can work with them so it just teaches you to cultivate this incredible relationship of reverence with your body with gaia with mother earth um, with plant medicine, which I do consider the oils to be. And just that, like daily consistent coming back to a self-loving ritual, I think has been the most transformative thing I can kind of point to that's changed me as a person. Being so in touch with yourself and being so, yeah. Yeah. And just that like consistent, yeah. I mean, the oils, I really, I, I know I keep putting them on this pedestal, but I really do consider the oils and doTERRA as a company and the community mm -hmm. to be like the foundation of all of my other explorations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, okay, so uh, how did people receive you when you first started sharing the oils, positive uh, and negative? <laughs> Well, bear in mind that when I first started doTERRA, my group of friends were like, you know, people who were not interested remotely. And I literally didn't have like, I had like one friend who is like vaguely into meditation. Right. <laughs> I plunged headfirst in, as in I got the oils and then I wrote this email out like the next day being like, hi everyone. And I literally sent it to a hundred people, or more, like 200 people. This is how we, we used to be trained to do this. So like this big thing of like, hey guys, I'm now working with oils and I'm now teaching and I'd like to invite you to a class. And like 15 people said, yeah, sure. And then like the other 85 didn't even read the email. <laughs> and then literally those people came around. Like, so I went from buying my oils to hosting a huge workshop within like two weeks. I, God knows how I got through it. Um, but it gave me such a confidence boost because I had a huge phobia of public speaking. I know you can relate to this. And yeah. this platform, this is a whole other conversation about this, the personal skills that we've learned from this business, yeah. right? Oh my goodness. But yeah. I've had another yeah, video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like this is such a big <laughs> I've had every reaction under the sun. I have been um I've had incredible support and I've had incredible derision. Mm -hmm. I've had the, all the classic textbook things of most of my closest friends at the time never came to a class. Um, which was very hurtful at the time, which felt hurtful. So it's like taught me all about codependency within my friendship groups. Like so many lessons have been learned. And now I just have like such a more sort of, um, I don't know how to describe this, but like, I just know like I'm meant to reach the people I'm meant to reach. And it really genuinely doesn't bug me anymore if someone doesn't fall into that category. And I'm I, I really do feel like I'm here. I've got incredible plant medicine and, and I'm here to serve as myself. So whoever's drawn to that, I'm here, but I, I'm much less 
I think I was a bit pushy in the beginning okay. because I, I felt like if I wasn't, I didn't really know how else to do it. Do you feel the same that you've had a metamorphosis of how you absolutely and I think also because when Move Whoopal started probably around a similar time, Ellie, you know, and it's a lot of what we were being taught was from America. And they've just got a different way of doing things right in America, you know, and it's not bad or worse or better or not so good. It's just different. Um so I think we were probably sort of trying to emulate their style and that doesn't work for us. Yeah. Yeah. Feeling to ourselves. Exactly. Europeans are just different. We don't have scripts you know we have to connect on a heart-to-heart -heart level we don't like being sold to we don't you know we're not that that way no so yeah it is a different different kettle different fish over here um okay that's wonderful thank you um so what has been the biggest challenge in building uh res your residual income so i don't know if people really know what residual income is but it means that you're no longer working for per hour or for you're not getting paid per service, you're building a client base and then that client base, whatever they do, you know, we receive income every month for that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so can you talk a little bit to that? Please? Yeah, um, I think the biggest challenge for me, and I, again, I'm sure you resonate for building a residual income is keeping that vision, that mm -hmm. strong vision and staying on that path because the big difference between building a residual income and following a more traditional model of, you know, being paid per hour or being salaried is that it can take a while to build up a robust residual income. In doTERRA, we have various income streams that we're paid simultaneously. The residual side of it, i.e. just the regular orders is only one part and it's the part that takes the longest to grow. It's also the part that is the most important in a way because that's what gives you the true location freedom and the time freedom. But it can be difficult when you have such a strong vision, you can feel the power of the residual income and you can feel like, you know, I could see literally from day one, I could see the whole thing. Okay, this is what I could, this is what my life could be. And I'm going to go for it. Step one. Now, normally when we work our asses off, we see money for that relatively quickly, whether it's, um, you know, this is for people who are not building residual incomes, but mm -hmm. if you're in a standard job or anything like that. Um, but this takes longer. And so I would just say the challenge has been keeping the faith in my own vision, keeping the faith in myself and not succumbing to panicking about those things or about projecting onto my, um, my leaders and my, my, you know, my team members. Mm. Not their responsibility to prop up my residual income. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I would say that's been a massive learning curve, really, about having continuing to hold the faith in my own vision and not allowing my own shadow, my own demons, and my own self esteem to come in and tear it down. Mm. Yeah, no, that's really powerful. And it does take a lot of patience and a lot of vision, <laughs> a lot of persistence. And yeah. yeah but aren't you so glad? right now that you have it oh my goodness i mean Crazy. I mean, it you, but like this all happens or like recessions happen and things and you know our businesses just kind of grow and that's that's incredible and even if you go away traveling like i think we both Absolutely. Like, big trips yeah, travel a lot yeah it's you're crazy anything and your business is growing i mean it's 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 a really incredible thing i know because like right now i'm not um the way i'm kind of doing my business now because i'm in cornwall full time is um, I'm really kind of supporting my existing customers in this like bizarre kind of altered reality state we're in. Yeah. So I'm not even like going, I am not bringing in new business at the moment. I'm really focusing on, and yet uh, because I'm investing so much time into my customers and in, into the education and I'm sharing authentically from the heart, you know, on Instagram every day, because I just do that anyway. I love talking about oils. And so it's just amazing to me that on the 15th of the month, which is when we get paid our residual income checks this month, I saw that money come into my bank account and I just felt such gratitude that I'm here. I haven't left the house in, you know, well, apart from to go to the supermarket, but I haven't done any face-to-face -face business. Mm -hmm. And yet I'm still receiving an ever-increasing check every month. And every penny of that check comes from customers whose lives have been changed by the oils and who are ordering um regularly and are uh, and you just get messages message after message of 
customers saying, like, I cannot thank you enough for having introduced me to the oils. And it's so rewarding. Mm -hmm. And I feel so grateful for that financial stability that I have. I cannot tell you how grateful. Yeah. Yeah, it's really quite something. I remember thinking actually when I was in photography and I worked with musicians, people in your industry, and that was the only people I really knew that earned residual income. You know, people that made amazing songs that they sold on and, and yeah. photography as well, but you know, they could make money off the same piece of work for yeah. the rest of their life. Christmas number one. I did try and write one. <laughs> did you? <laughs> you yeah, like years ago, I was like, I know that there's ways to make money from just doing something once. So <laughs> I was already like on the train of the Christmas number one, but it didn't work. <laughs> I'd love to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> I think I heard like one of your raps once. <laughs> talented. <laughs> <laughs> Multi talented. <laughs> okay, so um what do you wish you knew then that you know now? That okay to show your vulnerable your vulnerability and your wobbles, even to people who are supposed you're supposed to be like leading. In fact, you must. I wish I'd known that. I know that now. Mm. Yeah. And show your vulnerabilities to everyone, I think, right? That's been a big thing for me as well, just in general. Yes, to everyone, yeah. Um, okay, so I know cacao has become part of your um, rituals. Um, before we go into that, though, can you tell us a little bit more about other rituals that you've embraced? Yes, breath work. Mm. Massive revelation for me this time. Mm. Never done it before. Um, but I've begun doing the Wim Hof method. Love it. I know. One of your fellow countrymen. Yes. He's so classic. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing breathwork with him and also with another girl called Casey von Eiderstein, aka Karmic Wellness, who's actually in the Spirited Essentials upline. She let, she's a qualified breathwork coach. Mm -hmm. So doing both practices, so her type of breath and his type of breath now daily. I mean, it is like the quickest way into an altered state of consciousness. But if you're anxious, which everybody is at this time, like two days ago, I had a really bad day. I just felt, I just, I just wanted to watch. Literally, I was on the sofa watching Keeping Up With The Kardashians. <laughs> That's the mood I was in. I was like, and, and Simon came in and was like, what are you doing? <laughs> I just didn't want to move. And I was like, can you just leave the room, please? And all, and I didn't do my breath work that day. And then the next day I woke up in the same funk and I thought, oh my God, I can't face another day of this. So I did, I thought, no, come on, don't, you know, don't listen to the resistance, do your breath work. I did the breath work and I swear to God, it was like shift. It was just like, take it all and chuck it out of your body. So that, that has been profound to think that the greatest and fastest tool to feeling physically completely different is like in your lungs. Mm, absolutely. Amazing. And I'd done some, I'd done some with yoga teachers in the past, like when I was going through, you know, um, different healing techniques and things, yeah. I first started getting to all this health kind of stuff. But I remember even Sam as well from Spirit Essentials, when we were in Sicily, she really helped me with some breath work in Sicily. Yes. As well. And that kind of like, I'd kind of forgotten like what that had done for me. And then she kind of brought that back into my, my sort of realm. And yeah, it was really beautiful to kind of dive, dive back into that. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, tell us a little bit more about your passion for cacao. Tell us what cacao is for people that don't even understand as well and how that's become a little venture of its own for you as well. Yes. So in a nutshell, cacao is chocolate, mm -hmm. but it's not the chocolate you have in the shops. It's a plant medicine. So ceremonial grade cacao, ceremonial grade drinking chocolate is um, a very specific native strain bean. So the bean we work with is from Peru called the chumcha. You also have the Criollo bean in Guatemala, but it's extremely difficult to find true native strain beans. Like everything's been cross-pollinated and hy hybridized. Is that even the word? Um, and so it's very difficult to find true, like ceremonial grade, as we call it. Um, and I first heard about it I mean, years ago, but there's um, one particular brand that I um, partner with called Fly Cacao founded by a very dear friend of mine, Mackenzie Marsloff, who's a, a conscious food entrepreneur. She also has a, um, a dessert hummus company. The first dessert hummus she made it up called Delighted By. And 
um, it's, yeah, it's, it's front and center of my life. So I treat it as a plant medicine. So every single day without fail, I sit with my cacao and I have a personal ceremony of some sort. Now that can be as diverse as if I'm traveling that day, mm -hmm. I'll just make it on the go. But I will always make sure that at the very least before I start sipping or as I'm sipping that I take some time just to go inwards to connect with the plant medicine, to connect with the spirit of cacao, who's the, the spirit behind the plant medicine, and to have an intention. And in a nutshell, what cacao does is it opens your heart in a very visceral way, like you can feel it. The first time I ever drank cacao, I drank it. I had no idea what I was doing with my ceremony. I was like, um, mm, you know, trying to make it profound. I had no idea what I was doing. And then I um, left the house to go and do some errands and I was bouncing down the street. You know, when you're just in such a good mood, it's bursting out of you, you smile at everyone you see, and you're like, hi, oh yes, I'd love to help. You know, like people come up to you and ask for help and you're like so happy that they did. And everything's just like lush and bright. So that was my first experience. And it's not always like that. Sometimes if my intention is I want to work on a specific wound or a self-esteem issue that's come up, I'm now very good at if I'm triggered by anything in any way, shape or form, I don't just let the trigger happen. I'm like, oh, why did that annoy me so much? Or maybe there's a person, like there's several people in my life who, who definitely bring up feelings within me. And I've done so much work in journaling, trying to work out where this trigger originated. And if you do this along with cacao, it has the most profound results. You can go in and you can do some serious deep seated healing on some really deep emotional wounds. Mm. And it's also just such a gentle plant medicine. It's just a heart opener. And so now I'm officially, um, as Mackenzie would call it, the European guardian for cacao. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's, it's just been a dream come true. And we're running a cacao facilitator training program, which registration's closed today. <laughs> So it's pretty much now probably too late to enroll. Um, and that project is just my dream, my dream come true. And where do, where do you get it? If, if people are listening and they want to get their hands on some of it, where should they find it? So they can go to flycacao.co.uk and cacao is K-A-K-A-O. So it's with a K, flycacao.co.uk. Uh, that's if you're in Europe. And then if you're in America, you would order from flycacao.com. If you're in New Zealand or Australia, it's flycacao.com.au. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. And actually, I don't know if you do this or if you even agree with doing this, but I used to put um, quite often like orange oil or oh, something else. Every I... day I put something. <laughs> I think this is a toothpick of rose. Oh, toothpick of rose. I've never tried that. Oh you my God. Toothpick down the nozzle. Mm. And then you just stir it through and that is so powerful. It's enough. Like one drop would be way too much. Mm. Oh, it's incredible. A toothpick of rose. Ooh. Mm, that sounds amazing. Yeah. yeah, I remember a couple of my friends came over from Scotland uh, about a year ago and they were just like, okay, well, we're here. We have to try this cacao. You tell us all about it. Oh, that's amazing. Really special. Yeah, it was really yummy. <laughs> yeah, it was a great experience. And again, I, I kind of felt the same because I'm not trained and I've not done it as much, you know. So I was kind of like, okay, well, we're going to do some cards and we're going to do some meditation and we just kind of really soft and really easy. Yes. But it was, it was a really beautiful experience. That's so nice. I love hearing that. Yeah. Okay. So um, I think we should just ask a couple of questions that are quite wide at the moment and, and, you know, feel free to say two words or more, whatever you feel like. But like, what do you think the purpose of life is? I saw you'd written me that question. <laughs> but actually, I have a very simple answer for it. Right. I currently believe, of course, this changes all the time. My current belief is that the purpose of life is to fully embody and accept our humanity. As in, we're perfectly imperfect which is perfectly perfect just accept and fully ground into your physical body that's it basically and and our our, our job on this planet is to live a human experience mm. and all the incredible things we have as humans our minds our bodies capable of a lot absolutely yeah. okay and who do you admire most and i'm sure again you've got millions of answers and for different periods there's probably different people but who pops to your mind at the moment i'll tell you who 
currently I am in constant admiration is Samantha Ali. Yeah. In the very dear friend of both of ours, and she's in Spirited Essentials. She, I've known her now for five years. And she, in that time that I've known her, she's been through Kundalini teacher training. Mm-hmm. Level one, and I think level two. And the, the I, I was going to say metamorphosis, but I've said that word like a thousand times. But the transformation that I have seen in Sam, mm-hmm. it, it literally, when I was telling Simon about it, my husband, he actually cried because he could feel for me just how admiring. It is just, a, it's just proof that, if you dig deep and you do the work, the profound effect and the transformation it can have on you and, uh, and how she stepped into leadership and into being the most incredible teacher. Last night, she led us in a two hour mantra meditation. Wow. Which was just insane. Um, and yeah, it's her resilience and her strength and her gentle nature. So right now she is, I mean, she, I'm always admiring of her, but she really is the person I admire the most right now. That's so wonderful. And I love that I even brought her up earlier talking about getting better. I know, yeah. She's obviously had a profound effect on me, even though I don't know her as well as you do at all. But that's, yeah, yeah, that's really powerful. And Kundalini seems to really bring that, bring a lot of people to their real authentic selves, doesn't it? It's really. Absolutely. Yeah, she's, she's completely gone into her authentic self. You can tell when some, it's grace. Like she just embodies grace. Like peace. She's got such a presence about her. Yeah. yeah. And then this might be the same answer then. Is there anyone else who's changed your life that you want to mention? Um, yeah, there's one person I'd like to mention, and that is a guy called Richard Rudd, who I'm always talking about. He's the creator of a system that I adore called the Gene Keys, oh. um, which is a amalgamation of various ancient systems like the I Ching, human design, astrology, mm. um, tarot and it's basically a um really fun and amazing um synthesis that he channeled and it's basically looking into your inherited shadow patterns and the gifts that spring from there and it has had an incredible effect on my life i mean it's probably like the number one thing outside of oils that i that has had like a tangible effect on my physical body and on my heart Mm. and so richard rudd He's the most chilled out person in a sea of American teachers. He's from Devon. Okay. So, he's so chilled out. He's so like English. And at the moment, there are a lot of us who find him deeply comforting. So you can go on YouTube and he's got a lot of amazing videos. And you can create a free profile on thegenekeys.com. And it's life changing. Wow. That sounds yeah. fantastic. I think I'm going to grab a cup of cacao and do that. Yeah, <laughs> my them on my ear. <laughs> Yeah, Richard Rudd, he's definitely the person who's changed my life. Beautiful. Oh, thank you so much, Ellie, for joining me today. So much fun. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. We'll say goodbye for now. But yeah, Spirited Essentials, Shine from Inside, we're all here. Yes. (laughs) Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, thank you.